Okay, Astro Van Tribers. Astro Van Tribe. <laughs> Just a quick off the cuff talk up of how the uh, trip went with the van. You will notice there is not a brand new aluminum winch bumper on here. There is not an aluminum rack system up here. There is not an aluminum rear bumper with swing away box and tire mount. There is not. <laughs> There is not a really cool, neato, neato uh, skid plate under here. Nope, nope. Not here. There's nothing here. There's nothing there. Nothing to protect that oil pan. I lied. I lied to all of you. I didn't purposefully lie to you. You know the story. Uh, guy I know kind of blew a lot of smoke up my ass saying we were going to do all this stuff and none of it happened. I actually stayed a full month longer than i needed to while i was in jersey uh, hoping that would happen but it didn't uh, it doesn't make the guy a bad guy it just means he wasn't exactly you know truthful but those things happen i think a lot of times people will say things and promise things and do things out of the goodness and they truly mean what they're saying but then your life gets in the way work and whatnot and i understand that but sometimes when you do that, you have to realize that you're screwing other people's time, and that's kind of a bummer. Right now, I am kind of going through the van, making decisions about what I'm keeping, what I'm not, as far as the design and the gear I brought. This is some stuff I brought back with me. Uh, I'm kind of looking at the tool situation here in the back. Uh, the, I'm very happy with the way everything worked out. This was the most comfortable trip I've had in the van with tools and everything these built-ins here work they will stay uh, i do plan to take this one out and do a, a very large opening here slider uh, similar to what i did there but larger i can get this box with this uh, jack in and out of there so that works i did have to get tools out so i want to try to make that easier for myself also this was sized so i could get a uh, table saw and most of my tools underneath here cannot get the big vacuum or the compressor under here so i am thinking that next time i might change the configuration i may just do a long one on this side that's higher uh, to get that those things underneath a deck space I'm not sure yet how that's going to work out but i think i can do it Think about blocking out this window all together and doing a cabinet. I've mentioned that many times before in other videos. Um, <clears throat> with a not so tall cabinet over here going across. Put a small one up here. That's all gonna happen. I gotta rip the ceiling out, insulate that, and do the cedar. It's gonna be a combination thing here. Um, thinking about the rack system, I have a good design that I think I could do myself, where I don't necessarily need welding. Uh, but when I do that, I kind of want to tie into the ribs that you can't see here because this headliner is still in place. The way the factory mounts work, there's nothing special there. The screws that go through there, they do, so these, I don't know what you want to call them, but these little risers here, they do span the ribs that are part of the cage of the system, the way the, this truck is built. But the way that they attached it is just like these weird little rib nut things that go through the sheet metal on the roof. They don't go into those ribs. So if I come up with a system, it's going to be stronger than that. I was like, you got to do everything heavy duty, right? I've put the feelers out to some fabricators I know out here. So hopefully I can make that still happen. I'm not a welder, don't have a welding shop. And the design is the main thing anyhow. You have to know how you're gonna do things first. <clears throat> and I've looked at this stuff enough and I looked at what else is out there to know I can add some really, really cool details to the design to make it totally unique, user-friendly, ergonomic in the areas where it needs to be, and just bitching. But I can't just do that by myself. I'm not really a money guy. So I'm an idea guy and a design guy. And I do what I say I'm going to do. <laughs> and I finish things. I start things and I finish them. So anyhow, that's what's happening. Overall, the van did great. It's odd because I got some great gas mileage on the way out there. 
And it's weird because, so the way I figure the mileage, just so you know, the mileage on my Speedo doesn't matter anymore because my tires are bigger, right? So that throws the Speedo off a little bit and it's not gonna give me accurate mileage as far as distance. So I'm using maps, Google Maps, it tells me from point A to point B how far I have to travel. And so it's basic math at that point, right? So when you stop to get gas and you fill up, say you filled up before you left, when you put gas in, you look at how many gallons it took, and then you can divide that by how many miles you traveled. It tells you how many miles you burned for that many gallons of gas. Uh, on the way out, at one point I got over 22 miles per gallon, which sounds crazy. Even to me it sounded crazy, but I did it. I double checked it. I was getting really great gas mileage. I was in Jersey for a while, and I decided before I wanted to come back I should change the plugs. So. Turns out when I did that, I grabbed the plug wire, ripped it right off, so I replaced the plug wires, the cap, the rotor, and the plugs. And I drove to Kentucky, and I got terrible gas mileage. It wasn't so bad, actually, from Kentucky, but from Kentucky to Georgia, it was bad. But, you know, you're going through some Appalachians there, too, so you don't think about that. Once you get over 5,000 feet, and it's interesting because the uh, in other states... Arizona, California, states out here, they'll tell you what elevation is. You'll see a sign on the side of the road. You don't always see that back east. Maybe it's there, I just don't notice it. Um, so that's not always the first thing that crosses your mind. I also had some surfboards on the roof that were definitely creating drag. And so all that was a problem. I threw a, uh, an engine light came on. <clears throat> when I got to Georgia, I had to replace the, mat, the uh, camshaft sensor which is in, goes into the distributor. So I take the doghouse off again. I did it on a cold, rainy, wet day and I had to get under the vehicle and turn the lower pulley to align this metal thing that's inside the distributor that the rotor attaches to, has a notch in it, and you have to rotate that so you can get the camshaft sensor out. So it's a hassle, but it's not brain surgery, did it. It takes more time to get the doghouse on and off than it does to replace the part. That's the most annoying thing about working on a van. Changing plugs is easy if you don't break a plug wire. Because <laughs> with the lift, I don't even have to take a tire off. I just turn the tire, I got all the spark plugs right there. You can easily get to them. Bought myself an extension, and uh, so I'm, I'm good to go on that now. But uh, did all that. Eventually got to Texas. Spent the night there with some really, I mean, just super nice people. Everybody I stayed with are just super nice people. Incredible. And clean the mass airflow sensor and the air filter. And this is the thing that gets me. So I had a dirty mass airflow sensor. I didn't throw a code for that. Just took it out and looked at it. It was pretty fucking, excuse me, pretty filthy. <laughs> so uh, cleaned that. The air box was full of crud. I was knocking dirt out of the air filter. It had never been that bad before. I felt like a jerk because of that. I was like, my God, what's wrong with me? So here I am getting worse gas mileage after replacing the wires, the plugs, the cap, the rotor, the camshaft sensor, cleaning out the mass airflow sensor, <clears throat> new air filter, still getting bad gas mileage. So the thing, the only thing I can figure is you are climbing, you are in higher altitude in a lot of that area, five to 7,000 feet. You get to 5,000 feet or more on a vehicle that's used to being and probably always was at sea level, that's a thing. Uh, if you already live in the mountains, your vehicle's probably aspirated for that. You also have the gearing for it. A lot of the vehicles, the Astro Vans came with different gearing if they were bought up in the mountains. You know that, Astro Van drivers. So, uh, you know, it's a thing. I'm going to work on this. You know, your, your engine's basically just an air pump. The efficiency of your motor comes from how fast uh, it could take in air and how fast it could get rid of it. And about the volume of the air, the powers, the volume of the air could take and put out. So. The only other thing I could think of off the top of my head is a new muffler. I got some rust, a little bit of rust on the bottom, and I'm sure that thing's factory. There may be a Flowmaster that's California legit where it'll still pass emissions. If you know what that is, uh, give me that number. I'll look into it. I'm thinking that might help. I don't know what else to do. Maybe somebody who has a computer and they can computer tune it. That might help. Um, that would be nice. So, but that's pretty much it. I uh, the van is was ran strong no real problems uh, you know it's the sort of thing you could work on nothing broke I took it on the beach I had it in the mountains I had it off-road uh, it was great 
you know, it was uh, overall it's pretty good trip. People was a thing. People were a thing. You know, I, mean, I was home this time. So long as I was ba I've been back in my hometown since I left in '92, and a lot of little things creeped up that reminded me of why I left in the first place. <laughs> that weird little drama and whatnot wasn't any fun. But uh, you know, overall, it's still a beautiful place, and I love it. But uh, I don't know if I'll go back next year or not. I'm a little bit put off by it, to be honest with you. Uh, interesting thing about work and money in L.A. You know, I, I timed, you don't know, I'll tell you. I timed my drive back from New Mexico so that I'd be pulling into Los Angeles on a Monday morning super early, like between 5 and 6 a.m. And at 5 a.m., I was probably about an hour or so away from where I live on the 10, and it was a sea of red taillights and people still trying to do 100 miles an hour. Nuts. And then you get here and gas is anywhere from like 485 to 585 a gallon. A lot of, right here up on the corner, it's 585 a gallon. I believe that's for regular. So that's not good. Masks are a thing here still everywhere else in the country. No, no. Uh, prices of everything else are up. Brings me kind of to what I charge for a living. You know, I don't uh, work a normal job like everybody else. I don't work nine to five, 40 hour work week or anything like that. I'm basically, I kind of work like I'm semi-retired. There's, I won't work for weeks at a time. I don't pull in a whole lot of money. But I discovered on this trip, I also have not been charging enough money. <laughs> like I had no idea how off I was because I don't talk to other people about that stuff normally. I visited a pal in Moab, and he has a company. They do custom kitchens and woodworking and whatnot. He said, Mike, there's guys here that are making $65 to $75 an hour. Don't have the skill level you have. And I discovered that across the country, hearing the same thing from other people. I talked to a woman who manages money and does investments for people in Jersey. She's like, no, 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 you have to raise your price. Talked to a guy in Jersey that uh, does what I do and hires other carpenters. He pays his guys $90 an hour. And I showed him what I do, and he goes, wow, my guys don't have the skill level you have. So I was totally out of touch with all that. And now with the high cost of gas and the clear inflation, <clears throat> the gas thing, I don't want to get all political, but let's be real about this. A year ago, our country was energy independent, and we had affordable gas, as well as a lot of other things. And now we're buying gas from the people that want to cut our heads off again. So to me, that doesn't equate. That doesn't make any sense. I'm not, I'm just saying those are facts. And it's a problem for me. So uh, I guess numbers across the board are going up. I don't know what that's going to mean. I feel really bad for people that uh, are having a hard time, you know, have kids and whatnot. And they've got to pay these prices for food and fuel. It's insane. So I don't know. But... Putting all that aside, the van's running great, <laughs> and I'm very happy with it still. I, I'm i seriously contemplating a high top, a fiberglass high top. I just don't see anything I like. If I could work with a high top company and design my own thing, it would be very cool. There's also a pop-up thing you could do. It's not cheap. I think it's like five grand. There's a place in Colorado that'll do it. It's the, the whole roof comes straight up. If you could stand up in that thing, it could change everything. It can make it a lot better. So those are things I am con seriously considering. But then I got to pull in some more work, you know. Anyhow, thanks for following along. You know, I know I'm all over the place. I talk about the barefoot shoe movement. I got the bicycle thing going on. Obviously the Astro Van thing. I throw some fitness stuff in there from time to time. I speak my mind on what's going on in the world. Yeah. Uh, human nature I like to talk about and what I notice from other human beings. It's a funny thing, you know, if somebody gives you grief, if they think that you are full of yourself or you love yourself too much or something like that, they're the one with the problem, you know. Uh, if you're a confident person, that could oftentimes be mistaken for being conceited or being too full of yourself. When in reality, you might just be confident with who you are. You know yourself well enough to be totally confident, saying whatever you want, speaking to a camera, all that stuff. Some people get jealous about that sort of thing when they don't have those same qualities. You know, some people have achieved good things in their life and have made money and all that, but they feel like they're still lacking in something else. So when they see somebody else with those qualities they wish they had, they're a little jealous and so they, you know, sting at, sting at you a little bit. 
it doesn't make them a bad person. Eventually, if they get more confident with themselves, they'll get past that. Uh, whenever somebody's judging you and making those sorts of statements, just realize that a lot of that's really their own problem. A lot of, tra a lot of transference going on out there in the world, people. So be good to one another. Always do the best you can. Say what you mean. Mean what you say. Finish things off. Don't waste other people's time. It's just not a nice thing to do. It's not a nice thing to do. And, uh, you know, your, our time is all we have. When you boil everything else down, your time is the most valuable, precious thing that you have uh, next to your health. So be healthy, too. <laughs> what else can I tell you? I don't know. I don't know. I, I love the van. Still stoked with it. I'm going to start selling some stuff off and... Uh, who knows? Maybe I can get into van life permanently. I don't know that that would mean I would stick with the Astro. We'll see. You guys have a good day.